So when I think back to my most formative educational experience, they have involved not this image of a scholar sitting in a room reading books, although that's been great too, but they've involved work and learning in community. And uh, so that's something I've sort of sought to replicate as I've moved into this more of the teacher role and less of the, the learner role over the last decade or so. Uh, and I think in order to form these communities where we can really engage in challenging conversations around race and the environment, uh, challenging conversations around things like climate change, right? These giant challenges that are scary and overwhelming. In order to do all of that, we actually have to like and care about the people we're engaging with. Or if at least if we don't like them, we have to respect them, right? And so, so I've been thinking about and trying to create classroom communities and other learning communities that cultivates that more explicitly, that cultivates connection. So this reading group is my favorite part of teaching. That's, I offer it once a quarter. It's a one credit reading group. We choose a book collectively that folks want to read. Uh, students lead discussion once a week. It's pass, no pass. Um, and we just learn from each other. Um, students get to know other students who share similar interests for the first time often. Um, I've had a number of first year students in the group who have identified this as being like their entry point to ha finding a social circle and a community at Western. Um, and it's been really, I think, valuable for the, the students who, many of whom feel like they're ruminating on these issues and they're ex experiencing such sadness and grief about all the environmental injustices that they see happening in the world. And that somehow that grief and that sadness is lessened when they're talking in community with others who share those same values. Uh, so I, I just, I think that's so important and that's something that is easy to cultivate in a small class like that, but can be cultivated, I think, in other classes too, um, in simple ways, right? By asking students, even in a 150 person class on the first day to turn to their neighbor and introduce themselves and swap phone numbers so they can text someone in the class when they have questions. Um, I've also done little reading groups out of these giant, you know, 150 person GURs. So at least students have a group of 15 or 20 colleagues who they they know by name and they can identify you know if they see them across campus and, and that sort of thing um, in the last couple of years i've been thinking a lot about this idea of eco grief so lots of scholars are now engaged in this concept um, and it's it's something a lot of folks are talking about so this notion that understanding the environmental state of the world the state of environmental injustice in the world um, for many of us inspires these feelings of sadness and grief. And so I think that it's part of our role as educators to acknowledge that, um, to give students space to talk about that, and um, yeah, and to create a community to help offset some of those, those feelings.